This mini PC, a GMK Tech K8 Plus, is a powerful computer, shrunken down to the size of a wallet. With a fast Ryzen 7 processor in its core, we'll test it with Windows applications, a handful of games on Steam, including AAA titles, high-end emulation, Batacera, and also a teardown. Does this mini PC have enough juice, or will our jaws drop to the floor? As this certainly has the potential to become my main. Welcome to Team Pandora. Subscribble. Here's what came, let's open it up. So this mini PC came for purpose of video review. No cash has been exchanged, and all thoughts are our own. This one is the K8 Plus, 32GB, 1TB model. And these boxes are quite tight. Ah! Inside the box we get the mini PC, and there's a removable sticker showing us how to open the lid. There's a card with manual inside, and this one has many languages. There's only two pages for each, so there's not really much information included in here. Just tidbits like specs and stuff. We get a vase mount, so we can attach the mini PC to a monitor or underneath a desk. A GMK Tech HDMI cable, one and a half meter in length, and a power cable that inserts into the adapter. Bit of scuff here, but let's have a look in the last box. A power adapter from GVE. This is slightly smaller than the ones previously included, but the power levels are identical. 19 volts, 6.32 amps, at 120 watts max. And there's a warranty card if needed. So let's take a closer look. The K8 Plus is very similar to the M7 or M7 Pro we had on earlier, with a nice gap around the top, allowing heat to escape. On the front we have the Ocklink port, USB 4, two ports for USB 3.2, Generation 2, a 3.5mm audio jack, and the power switch that sounds like this. On the right side we have holes for cooling, and on the back is where all the action is. We have two ports for USB 2.0, Display port 2.1, HDMI 2.1, ports for 2.5 GB Ethernet LAN, one more USB 4, DC in, along the bottom, holes for air exhaust, and at the corner, Kensington. Kensington. That's the one, and we still have used it. Over here we've got more air holes, and we've got some more on the bottom. These will be for air intake, which should keep the CPU nice and cool. Here are the rubber feet, at a good height. Can't compete with a nice set of melons. And towards the bottom, we got holes for the VESA mount. So let's check out the specs. The K Plus houses the Ryzen 8845HS. This 8 core processor uses a 780M onboard GPU, making it capable of playing many top tier titles. The addition of Oculink future proofs the design, in case you wanted to add a full size graphics card later. This model has 32GB of DDR5 and a 1TB PCI 4 NVMe with Windows 11 Pro pre-installed, so as soon as you get it, it'll be ready to go. We've also seen an upgrade of both video ports from the original K8, allowing us to display higher resolutions and refresh rates. As for the price, it's on Amazon at $549 with a coupon, but we also recommend checking out the website, which ships pretty much worldwide, often has sales and has additional options, including a barebone one at $389. We'll left your links down below, so please check him out. And after plugging up the mini PC to a monitor, speakers, keyboard and mouse, we get down to testing. We're first greeted with the GMK Tech logo, and on the first boot, the Windows setup screen. After a couple of minutes of choosing our language and region, we're in. We first checked for malware and viruses, and this computer came back squeaky clean. Then we updated the AMD adrenaline drivers, as well as Windows. If you prefer to abstain, there's always stop 10 that can turn these updates off. As for tools and programs, the K8 Plus is pretty much capable of anything ranging from standard web processing and office tools, to production, such as 2D graphics like Krita, using it as a digital audio workstation, or even video editing. Of course, internet browsing is perfectly possible, so we can watch our favorite tunes, do some shopping, or even stream videos on Netflix. And it runs as smooth as butter. Here's some of the Netflix stats. 
and 4K YouTube. No complaints here. Moving to the benchmarks, the K8 Plus has a definite boost compared to the previous K8. Then when raising the TDP from 54 to 65, the Vulcan score floors every mini PC we've had on. Time Spy shows a similar picture, but as the 7940HS has a 100MHz boost, the K8 Plus benches slightly lower. It can actually be seen as a newer version of the 7840HS, with equal clocks of the GPU and CPU, but with a 60% boost in AI performance. Moving to Crystal Benchmark, we've got some great speeds from our 1TB storage, and teamed together with low latency, should be great for music production. When testing for Wi-Fi strength, we get a good 80%. We think that they could have used a better adapter that supported Wi-Fi 6E. Meow. When it comes to gaming, this thing is no slouch. It ran every 2D game we threw at it, and as it has plenty of power, it doesn't need to push as hard, so power consumption is very low. Moving on to some esports titles now, Dota 2 runs really well. For a 1080p best looking, an FPS stays up around 80 for the entire game. Rocket League with a frame rate uncapped is a good test to see if there are any thermal throttling issues with the memory. And as there's no slowdown, there's no problem. Fortnite, 1080p high settings. As we raise the virtual video memory to 8GB, it definitely helps to keep the game running smoothly while many textures need to be loaded up. And once we hit the ground, this game is running at over 100fps. Moving on to some Counter-Strike 2, we're definitely playable. Gaming Super Stop. Here's No Man's Sky, 1080p standard settings, and we turned off the motion blur to add clarity. If we turn on FSR2, we get a nice boost in our frame rates. Tekken 8 at 1080p medium settings gives us full speed. That is, until we reach the third stage. To get around this, we can lower background detail and post-processing, which gives us a constant frame rate. Let's move on to the AAA games. Here's Black Ops 6, 1080p, balance settings. If we turn on FSR 1, we get over 70 FPS. And then with FSR 3, with frame generation, it really takes the cake. And this can also be brought over to multiplayer. And also Cyberpunk 2077. When it comes to higher-end emulation, the K8 Plus can definitely hold its own. PlayStation 3 games like Ridge Racer 7 and Wipeout Fury can be seen running reliably at 1080p. Wii U, as well as even the Nintendo Switch is also possible. When it comes to the Xbox 360, 
Games are playable, but there are frame dips, and this may be due to the emulator rather than the hardware. If we look at the BIOS, we have many options to mess with. In the Power Mode Select, we can adjust TDP to 35, 54 and 65, or we can disable IPU control, turning off Ryzen AI if required. At stock, the GPU VRAM is set to 3GB, but we can adjust this all the way up to 16. We suggest 8 or higher if you're primarily using this for games. More precise options for altering TDP and fan curves are also available, but we had no issues with the stock settings. Secure Boot is here if you wanted to play Valorant, and of course, we can load up other operating systems. Batacera Linux is a nice OS for emulating many systems. It looks similar to RetroPie, but as we're using a computer, it's much more powerful. Both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth adapters work out the box, as does the sound if we select this option. It's fully capable of playing arcade games like NBA Jam on Ice, Super Scalers like Afterburner 2, or even games from the Sega Model 3. This one's Daytona USA 2, Power Edition, and it's running full speed. Classic computers like the Atari ST or Commodore Amiga run extremely well. As are the handhelds. Here's some PSP at four times resolution. And it handles God of War like an absolute beast. PlayStation 2 at four times resolution. We even tested some original Xbox. Upscale to 4 times resolution, most games ran great. When it came to Outrun 2, this needed to be bumped down to 2 times resolution in order to run at a constant 60. This game has a few secrets, including tracks from Scud Race, Daytona 2, and even the original Outrun. Doom 3 Resurrection of Evil also has a neat feature. The original Ultimate Doom and Doom 2 in split screen. Moving on to temps and fan noise, at idle, the CPU sits around 40 degrees Celsius, and it's whisper quiet. Pulling around 13 watts from the wall. Under a regular gaming load, CPU is raised to 71 degrees Celsius, and the computer is still barely audible at around 83 watts. In order to max out fan noise, we set TDP to 65 watts and ran a 100% CPU and GPU stress test. And in this unlikely scenario, this is how it sounds. Using this much power. When it comes to opening up the K8 Plus, it's very easy. You just twist off the top, then the four screws in each corner. From here we have full access to the Wi-Fi adapter, memory, and the two NVMe slots. The storage included comes with a heatsink, but let's see what we've been given. So we have a Biwin Wukong NV7400. While it does look sus, this is the manufacturer behind Acer, so we are looking at reliable storage. One thing to note is the second NVMe slot won't have enough space for the heatsink, but as it sits directly under the fan, it should be fine. We're given two sticks of crucial DDR5 memory and an Intel AX200 Wi-Fi chip. Looking into these holes, we can find four more screws, but let's see if we can get to the CPU. Ooh, hello. So here's the heatsink and fan for the CPU. And if we can take this off, it's easy maintenance. Just these four screws and tape. Now this is cool. The metal framework will definitely aid in removing heat from the CPU, and as this model uses regular thermal grease, maintenance should be a breeze. 
Let's see how much a difference a repaste of Amech does. Considering it was good as stock, there are still gains to be had. Nice. I think it's about time for the pros and the cons. The GMK Tech K8 Plus sits in the prime category for Zen 4 mini PCs. Not only is it competitively priced, this model is fast, quiet, cool, looks great, comes with reliable memory, has fast storage, is easy to maintain, and comes with an oculin port if you ever need a faster GPU. For the cons, the Wi-Fi could be better. It's great to see that GMK Tech have finally come with a winning formula. Not only can we give it two thumbs up, it's very easy to recommend, especially at the price of the current sale. We've left your links down below, check him out. Summary. Mighty but affordable, this has juice. Back in a punch, it's as strong as a moose. Welcome to A8 4.5HS Town. This mini PC makes jaws drop down. GMK Tech K8 Plus is where it's at. Cool and quiet, it's a fact. Triple A games and emulation. But Intel Wi Fi missed the station. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. If you have a question, you can write down a comment. I do my best to respond to each one. And if you like what we do, we have a Patreon and also a Discord, so come join us. This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandory, and I'll catch you on the next one. Tira. Hey, it's me, John Luke. Give me a kiss.